Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we can go about making our websites run faster by adding dynamic compression in Server 2019 IIS. Now, one way that you can help to improve the overall performance of your web server is by enabling dynamic content compression. Now, you already have static content compression enabled, but you can add in dynamic content compression to help improve your performance of the web server even more. They both have a different effect depending on what resources you have available on how well your web server will perform. So let's take a look at this real quick. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to add roles and features and we're going to look, take a look at these two different types of compression. So we're just going to go ahead and click on next, click on next, click on next, and down here, we're going to expand where we have Web Server IIS currently installed as a role. And now we're going to expand the Web Server option here. And underneath here, we're going to go to Performance. Now, currently, you'll see that Static Content Compression is already installed, but Dynamic Content Compression is not. Now, you can get a little information about either of these just by highlighting each one of these different compression types, then going over here to the right. Static compression provides infrastructure to configure HTTP compression of static content. This allows for more efficient use of the bandwidth. Unlike dynamic responses, compressed static responses can be cached without degrading CPU resources. Now that's important. Dynamic content compression provides infrastructure to configure the HTTP compression of dynamic content. Enabling dynamic compression always gives you more efficient utilization of bandwidth. But, if your server's processor utilization is already very high, the CPU load imposed by dynamic compression might make your site perform more slowly. But, this is usually not a problem with CPUs. CPUs don't normally get utilized to their full potential. When we talk about CPU utilization, we're talking about somewhere between 75 and 85 percent. That is a good utilization for a CPU. So to make better use of your CPU utilization, you can enable dynamic content compression. And we're going to go ahead and check that box. We're going to click Next, and click Next, and Install. And once the installation is complete, we can go ahead and close the wizard. Okay, now we can go up onto our tools, and from here we can scroll on down until we come to Internet Information Services, IIS Manager. We'll go ahead and make this full screen. Again, let's go ahead and from our left window pane, expand everything so we get down to our default website. And we'll click on that default website. And now from here, we can just double click on compression. And you'll see now that you have both dynamic and static content compression enabled. Now, if you'd like to see what the difference is between these two, perhaps you want to monitor their performance, then you can just uncheck one or the either without having to uninstall using the roles and features wizard up inside of server manager. So if you did enable the dynamic content compression and you did notice that your CPU was being overloaded, you could just come in here and uncheck the box to get you back to using just the static content compression. Of course, the ideal situation would be to add additional CPUs to your web server to overcome that new utilization problem that you're having by using dynamic content compression. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about adding dynamic compression inside of Server 2019 for IIS. If you have any questions or you have any concerns about any of the content that was presented to you in this short video presentation, please do not hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.